So today we're out in the garage. I've got a couple wiener dogs helping me. Uh, airport in the background, in case you can't, can't tell by the jet noise. I'm going to be cleaning up this block. This is a 440 Chrysler. It's uh, pretty rusty. Lots of rust in the water jackets and the actual, the top of the block is, is covered in surface rust. Uh, it's got a, <laughs> uh, that piston is stuck in the bore because it's so rusty. So I just torched the rod for now to, to get the crank out. But uh, you have to have an old fashioned battery charger. Uh, one that stays on whatever current setting you put it on. Uh, you need a sacrificial piece of metal, which is just a piece of sheet metal I've got there. You put the positive clamp on the part that you don't want to keep. You put the negative clamp on the part that you want to keep. And this, this process is electrolysis. And uh, I mixed in some sodium carbonate, which is a water softener. For a tub this size, I probably used, uh, I don't know, a couple quarts of it. It's like a white powder. You can buy it at the market, places like that. It's in like the laundry, uh, laundry section. And this takes, for a block this size, probably gonna take a couple days with the current on. And uh, you can take the block out after that time period and scrub it, and it uh, should be free of rust. I'll bring you back when we get a little bit closer. Here we are, about an hour later. You can see that the water that was clear is no longer clear and you can see we're getting some electrolysis action i don't know if the camera picks up the bubbles or not but can you guys see the bubbles that's happening that's hydrogen gas being released from the chemical reaction of the iron oxides which are being attracted to, attracted to this sacrificial piece of metal i don't know if that's technically correct but that's my understanding of how this process works. And uh, if we pull up this piece of metal here, you can see this has only been going, I don't know, maybe an hour. And you can see the rust is being attracted to it. And uh, I've got a meter on here, which I've got clamped so it hopefully doesn't fall in the water. But you can see I do this without killing everybody. So we've got some, some current flow in the water and it's strongest where these plates are directed towards the block. So you'd have to flip the block over 180 if you really want to get the other side better because you can see the current is less over there. So basically the, the, it's strongest right here where the plates are. It's like the strongest attraction and if I move the probe closer, the voltage goes up, which is kind of interesting. And then uh, I've added a couple other pieces of metal to give me more, uh, more surface area for the rust to go to. So the block, all, all this dirt, all this uh, debris you see in there is all coming off that block. It's the grime, it's the rust. Eventually this block will be like a brand new block if you leave it in there long enough. And this is what I'm actually using. It's soda ash, which is the main part of it, sodium carbonate. Uh, I found I had to add a little bit more. I put in a couple quarts and that wasn't quite enough for a tub this size. So I added more until I could see, you know, definite, definite bubbling. And don't do this, uh, don't do this in your garage. The hydrogen gas is flammable. <laughs> so I'm doing it outside. Uh, Heed my advice, don't blow the roof off your off your shop. All right, I'll bring you back in a bit. Oh, it sounds like a kennel over there. I better go deal with that. So this is two hours into my, my soup making process. Thought I'd give you guys a short update of what the block looks like after two hours of 40 amps. I've done uh, the safest thing possible and extended the boom on my cherry picker, which is exactly what you should do. But I figure it's got enough built-in safety for this. So if you, if you look at the block, actually a lot of you look at the water jackets here and you, you compare that to what they were in the earlier vi earlier part of the video, it's quite a bit better already. Um, I wasn't here in the earlier part of the video because I was driving the Trans Am around. Yeah, but you can see, I mean, this is silicone too, but look how easy everything is coming off now. 
And if you do this long enough, like I'm gonna have it in here for probably three days, the block will come out looking like a brand new cast iron block. So I like to give it a light scrubbing. Uh, keep in mind, this was a greasy block when I put it in. It wasn't uh, <laughs> at all too greasy. And I'm getting rust and grease off at the same time. So just give it a little scrub, help the process along. And we'll put it back in. And then I'll uh, actually look at the front here a lot. You can sort of see that this, uh, this rust here is how bad the top of it is. That's rust and it's coming off. Uh, surface rust, of course. But um, yeah, I'll give you a little update. We'll put it back in the soup and uh, I'll show you what it looks like tomorrow after about 24 hours. Show me your anode. Uh, what's I mean, left? if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, Sorry, this, it's not that kind of video. Gosh, this thing. Look at that. That is the rust, the iron, leaving the block and going to my sacrificial piece of metal. So all this. All this uh, scale on it wasn't there before, before it was just like a piece like that. Yeah, yeah. And I added a couple more because I wanted to get more surface area. And the same thing has happened in these guys with the uh, jumper cables to make it work. Anyway, uh, wait another, another day and we'll see how, how it looks. Put it back in the soup. It's going down. There's a dog in the way. <laughs> He's always in the way. <laughs> Just like the Titanic. Came from the Black Lagoon. Okay, it's 24 hours later. We're going to take this out of the soup. We're going to see uh, how, how much uh, rust we've removed in a brief amount of time. I'll pull out these anodes. You can get a look and, and see how bad they are. Mm. <laughs> that was one day, right? So yeah, all, the, all this rust you see on here came off of the block. Let me pull out the, the, the next panel too. I had a jumper cable so I could add more metal to give more surface area, but this thing started out looking like that. Now it looks it looks good. You could you could almost eat off of that. What do you Dinner think? Dinner is ready. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't be that bad. And then uh, I got one more piece over here. Go ahead and raise the block up. So if you're looking for your motor mount plate, I, I've got it. Still good. Yeah, perfect. So the block is looking better. Uh, like I told you before, it was all grimy uh, and rusty. We put it in there and already without any scrubbing, it's a lot better. We're going to take it out. I'm going to do a brief pressure wash and uh, I won't make you guys sit through all that. We're going to take it out. We're going to pressure wash it. We're going to flip it and put it back in at a different angle. Anyway, that's the plan. Hopefully my, my strap isn't, isn't And you put it in at a different angle because it actually takes the rust off kind of in the direction yeah. that it's pointed. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we haven't done the top. Yeah, I, I, I notice it favors one direction. Wherever you put the, the sacrificial metal, that's where all the rust goes. So we're gonna break it down to the ground and do a little pressure wash. It'll be just that easy. This is my assistant, Bob. Hello, hello. Yeah. You might know Bob from his uh, his own videos. Oh, What's I, your channel, Bob? I'm only on Facebook, Vintage Lambo LLC. There you go. Soon to be on YouTube. Soon to be <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I need your vintage Lamborghini repaired. That's the guy. Oh, there's a, there's a broken rod in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're gonna get a good good idea of what comes off with the pressure washer right here. I'll try not to blast the camera. You can see the, the water jackets are coming pretty clean. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make you guys sit through the whole pressure washing, but you can see the block is coming amazingly clean. The pressure washing is honestly the best part. Well I can continue doing that. Well can here, here, get that one. You haven't got that one yet. Right. So you wait guys, you can see it right now. Oh I don't know. You can see all the stuff come out of it? 
It needs, it needs more time. Yeah, it. but it's already cleaner. But there you go. I mean, uh, it's getting better each time. So here we are a day later. I pressure washed the block out of the uh, electrolysis bath. Uh, I wouldn't take a bath in that now, it's pretty bad. But you can see that the block is, uh, you know, getting better each time. This is uh, two days into it, three? I don't even know now. It's been a few days, but this block was really rusty, it was painted, it was greasy, and electricity made it clean. Uh, one thing it does have is uh, a stuck piston in the bore. It's rusted in the bore pretty pretty badly. When I took it apart, I just torched the rod to, to get the crank out. But now it's time to get that piston out. So we're gonna apply a little little brake free here. Turn to see the Justin bro Justice Brothers, and we're gonna try and beat that out. Hopefully my arm doesn't fall off before it gets out. How come you're doing it and not having me do it, Tom? Uh, well, you can do it if you want. I'll film that. Nah, I don't want to make you look bad. Yeah, all right. Okay, everybody cover your ears. the finale. There. What do you think about that? That was very satisfying. All right, we're gonna put it back in the tank and uh, I'll bring you guys back tomorrow after another 24 hours. Hey Stan, hey Stan, what's happening over there? All right, he doesn't care. Tom, tell me about this engine block. It's looking a lot better than it was last time. The block is done. We've cleaned it. Somehow I, I managed to take a five minute job and turn it into five days. But uh, we cleaned de and de-rusted this block in our backyard using the electrolysis process in, in our tank. And you can see it's come out pretty well. I mean, look at that. That is just electricity that cleaned that. That and uh, chemistry with sodium carbonate. But it came out pretty good. Um, if you're doing this at home, it's way better than it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I recall the beginning of this um, water jackets were all full of crusty orange stuff right and they look pretty clean now yeah this block is totally usable now you know and uh there was a there was a piston stuck in it but uh i mean i guess you still had to hammer it out but it seemed like it came out a little bit easier than uh if you hadn't done the cleanup on it yeah this engine sat in somebody's backyard so it was totally corroded together and i wanted to get all the rust off of it before i took it to the machine shop the other way to do this is you could take and have it acid dipped uh which is a chemical process we decided to use electricity, which also works extremely well. And, and this engine was painted. It took all the paint off too. Oh, <laughs> so if you ever want to strip paint off, I highly recommend it. Um, so let's let's go over what folks might need if they're going to do this at home. Um, well, I mean, you they, need an engine block. <laughs> you need a dirty engine block. Don't use this one. I, I covered this a little bit, but you need an old-fashioned battery charger, one that uh, doesn't have automatic current. Uh, you want one that when you turn it on, it stays on. You need a plastic non or a non-conductive tank big enough for the item you want to de-rust. Uh, I use jumper cables because I kind of improved my setup here. I found it was better. Actually, we'll take out some of the sacrificial metal. This rust. Is there an airplane in the neighborhood? I don't know. Where'd that come from? I don't hear anything. <laughs> so this rust came off of that block and out of that block. And uh, if you're curious, as I was the first time we did this, if this just like wipes off, no, like it's it's like something that came up from the ocean. Like that's that's hard rust on it. There's just it doesn't wipe off or anything. Like it actually did move the rust. So you need to have a, a lot of sacrificial metal. I went through a few pieces, and I found that if I cleaned all the scale off in between, I could reuse it. And uh, the cleaner the metal, the, the better it worked. You see that? Well, 
you cut it down on the lathe, but uh, if you were using like a flat piece or something, you could, what, just wire wheel it or something? Yeah, I'll sand it, whatever, and make it shiny. But and you can see, this this came out of that engine. Pretty cool, huh? Super cool. Yeah. And if you're worried about uh, the mess you're left, this is just rusty water. <laughs> Sodium carbonate is a naturally occurring mineral. That was the active ingredient. Yeah, you can just dump this, although it's very iron rich. So if you have a garden, make sure that wherever you're dumping it, the plants like iron. Otherwise, you know, I don't know, you'll kill your roses. Those will be very powerful plants <laughs> after they're done with this iron. Um, overall, this is a fairly safe process, but Tom, I'm gonna make you tell them, even though you think they're already smart enough to know this. My, my, my viewers are smart enough to know this. Don't do this in an enclosed environment because it generates hydrogen gas and it's flammable. <laughs> so if you don't want to blow the roof off your garage and, and upset your wife or, or whoever, don't do it in the, in the house. I like how he says upset your wife as if he wouldn't be upset if he blew the roof off of his garage. If you did it this way, I'd be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> my, my suggestion is that you get a small blimp and you just have the blimp empty over the container. That's already been done. The Germans and, did that. And then, no, not, yeah. not a good idea. Anyhow. And one, one more thing I want to point out. Uh, even though I've got all the rust off of this, you see this is, uh, it just comes off like a powder now. So you're definitely going to want to hit it with a wire wheel or something before you make this a running engine. Because you don't want this powder in your oil. Don't, don't hit that part with a wire wheel. Yeah. All right. We're, we're going to rebuild this engine. Yeah, so next steps, it's going to the machine shop um, for normal machining as if it had been a nice block from the yeah, beginning. They're going to think it's higher class than what it is. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be back when there's something else to tell you. There you go.